So now I'm going to place all of the parts on the board. Uh, this is really simple. I'm going to just place uh, parts and then jump around. Place all the low profile components like the resistors first, then the capacitors, and then uh, any other parts, and then save the switches for last. Uh, the, but we can add all the uh, SMA connectors and then I'm, I'm going to do the transformers last because what they do is they interfere with putting my hands in here. So, uh, so it's really easy, but I'll just go at this randomly and just uh, place resistors. You should get yourself a resistor bender. It's called a lead former. This will do. Um, they might sell a set of these on Amazon. So it makes your presentation look much more professional. First bag is 500 ohms. Those go in the power supply. So the high voltage either goes through the diodes or the 6x4 rectifier tube. It then goes through the 470 ohm, which you can put a 500, and then a Hammond 155G, which is a choke. It will go to the 500 ohm, to the next 500 ohm. The path splits to the 2.2K and the 500 ohm. What that does is creates uh, capacitor banks for each of these. So I just wanted to kind of tell you how this is working, but you, you can reference the EQP1A schematic if, if you if in doubt. Everything I use is 0.7 of an inch bend. If you see a longer footprint, it's usually a one inch lead bending. So keep the resistor value pointing up so you can identify what you placed here in case you start troubleshooting you can just look at the resistor and you can see you can see the value written on top that'll make your life a hell of a lot easier instead of seeing a resistor with no labeling on it which will hem you up 500 ohm i'm i'm doing this on a piece of foam so i can keep the board level so the 50 millimeter lens does not go into weird depth of field mode and blur out all this shit. That is why normally you would lift the board, bend the lead under, and then and then solder it if you want, but 500. Okay, so the next resistor is 240 ohm. That goes into the six volt regulator. In the heater, it says 1K fixed. If you did not want to use a trimmer you just add skip the trimmer add a 1k it puts it relatively around 6.3 volts give or take uh if the resistors are one percent or five percent but it's it's you don't have to split hairs on that one some folks want the 50 ohm trimmer and get it to 6.3 period next resistor is 200k ohm are both one watt they go right here these next next resistors are 1k that'll be in the filtering section 1k next item on the menu 825 ohms on some of the resistors they might be rounded up to the nearest value like this is an 825 it could be it could be calling for an 830 so just be aware that uh, if you're like wait there is no 825 ohms that it's probably the closest to that value um, depending on where you shop uh, mouser or digikey for r5 it has an 820 ohm so we're using an 825 ohm that's that's what i was saying was uh, i at digikey there was no 825 or it was sold out we're using an 825 ohm resistor so 825, 820, there was only one of those. I got the diodes, but I'm going to use a, six, a 6x4 a tube. Next item is a 1 meg ohm resistor. So we have three 1 meg resistors. Okay, so one's in the filter, one's in the bottom board, one's R7. Sorry about my gloves squeaking. Next one mag. And the third 1M resistor is right here next to the output transformer. That is a one inch lead spread. And as you can see, I kind of bent the shit out of it. That's horrible. Okay, we'll just deal with this. 
365 ohms. The next item is a 365 resistors. Those I'm using for the 360, R8, and R9. 360, 360. Next item, 470K resistors. So the 470Ks, for the most part, will be bleeder, bleeder resistors to drain. They actually preload the circuit in some of the cases, like with the regulator. That means you don't you wouldn't have to have the tubes in to set the regulator up. You, it's 470K would do it. Anyways, one of the 470K resistors is in the heater supply. Ah, oh, bitch. Next 470K, two watt. And then right after the 500 ohms. Next item. 2.2K ohm, and it's one, and that will be right here. Next item, 47K resistor. 47. That will be right above the, the Gen 4 logo. That is a one inch, and it's two watts. Next resistor, 953 ohms. This is for the voltage regulator. 619 ohms. That's the closest value I could get to 620 ohms. And that is right above the feather. We have two 620 ohm resistors. The next 620 will be between the inner stage and the EQ input transformers. Okay, so the next item is a 4.7K ohm, one watt. That will, those are right above the two tubes. Okay, get these fucking things out of the way. So the next resistor is a 43.2K ohm. And that's probably the closest I could get to a 43K. So that's right above this 12AX7. The last resistor will be a 75 ohms, right there. Ta -da. 75 ohms, that's a 0.7. Oh, 1K. There it is. I was wondering where that was. 1K. So as you can see, that is all there is to just putting the resistors on. The next thing we're going to do is place the film capacitors and the smaller electrolytics. Save the, electro, the 400 volt electrolytics for the, one of the last steps because you don't want things interfering with your hands while you're placing the smaller parts. It just makes, place all the small parts, slowly go up in size with the electrolytics and then the heat sink and the voltage regulator for last. And that will be that. So, okay, so that's that cuts this. This was the resistor video and you can see how simple that was. And of course you'll solder them. I'm, going to lift the board off this piece of foam and solder from the backside to preserve some of the fierce blingage of gold.